Hey gang, welcome back to another episode of what has now been coined the Hecatomb. Of course, this is a, a meaningful name for the series being uh, a fan of Keyforge. Uh, there's a cardinal, a card named Hecatomb, so I thought that was pretty cool. Also, if you look it up, it has something to do with uh, an offering of 100 cattle or something, uh, which seemed pretty metal. Seemed pretty metal uh, to be to be going along with some ardent reapers. Uh, anyways, uh, so we got a fancy name for the 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 uh, series. I told you that probably was going to happen in post, and in fact, it did. So, uh, welcome officially to the Hecatomb. Uh, we are uh, continuing on playing 100 of my decks. Um, basically, that's basically all my decks of Ard Ardent Reapers, of course. Um, we're picking up with uh, round two in Group A. Uh, and I should mention before we get into this, um, for the time being, probably just going to be doing an episode a week, but maybe at some point, uh, if I can kind of get in the swing of, swing of things, um, I'm, you know, looking, look, looking to potentially increase that at some point simply because otherwise it's just going to take like three years to do this whole series. Um, we are picking up today, of course, in round two, we've already seen all four decks in this pod. Uh, so I will throw a link to the first part, uh, of group A. Uh, in the video description if you want to kind of see more of the description of those decks um, and maybe just a little bit more details of the decks themselves um, but uh, without further ado we're going to hop into the first round of the day which is Alfreda the Proxenus of Tottens versus Arvigne Centurion let's hop on over to the table Okay, and here we go of course we got Alfreda the Proxenus of Tottens the classic Maximum fun double deep Carl deck, um, which definitely has some shenanigans, uh, and we got Arvigne Centurion, a uh, bit of a bit of a board based deck here. Both decks uh, have a cross teleport, uh, so that that basically means we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be trying to be the last deck. Uh, each deck is going to try and be the last deck to play <laughs> cross teleport. Um, we got a Silent Room. Uh, and then uh, Buddy System and Fog Machine in terms of um, the relics in each of these decks. But yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and shuffle up the decks and we'll hop into this. We got a Yearn and Deep Carl coming out. Important note here, Deep Carl has this cool playability, but when you're setting up the game, uh, you ignore any playabilities on creatures that get put out. Um, I will once again throw... Uh, throw a link in the video description to my tutorial video uh, in case you're coming come in, in case you come by uh, come across this uh, this video without ever having heard of ardent reapers uh, you can go learn uh, a little bit more about the game and how it's played in just about 10 minutes i think maybe just maybe just over 10 minutes i don't entirely remember um but yeah here we go so we've got um two four power creatures for alfreda and alfreda and then arvigne has uh, the two power moth, which is which means Arvini is going to be going first, but also paired with that is the ten power Ginormica. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and draw three cards for Alfreda, uh, and then we're going to swap on over and draw three cards. I'm trying something a little bit different this time in terms of the changing players and stuff. So we'll see how it works. Um, we'll see how it works. Uh, I think we're probably going to play some creatures here. Uh, Ginormica, if this card wins a fight, draw three cards, then end your turn. That's probably going to be what's, what's going to happen. Um, got this Deep Carl, and we have this Yearn. So let's go ahead and play out a Brother Bear. Uh, five power, one victory point, skill Bear Hug. And we got the Teed Scrapper. Seven power, one victory point, with the bonus move a card from your opponent's score pile to its owner's discard pile. Um... This Adult Swim is a great card. If your opponent controls a card worth one victory point, move it to your score pile. Um, we This is our only option for uh, Relic Control. Uh, and I know there's the Silent Room in the other deck. So probably going to be something we're going to try and want to try and get to. I don't think it's worth ho holding on to now. Um, so we'll probably just discard that and figure out what we want to do here. We could fight something off the board. Uh, we could fight with both these creatures. Let's go ahead and fight Ginormica. Actually, no, we'll fight with Moth first. So I'm going to fight this Yearn. So that means the Moth loses the fight, gets scored by the other, the opposing uh, deck. Yearn goes to that discard pile. Ginormica will then fight. Oh, actually, it would be interesting. If we do this, 
we don't we aren't gonna these cards aren't gonna ready and is that worth it is that worth it um when i say ready yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna move to the active state um it's kind of the if you've played key forge it's the book of leq situation because you basically effectively have uh, immediately end your turn um i don't know that's kind of a tough one uh i wouldn't mind getting rid of this deep carl uh, just so it doesn't get recurred but i think what we'll do is we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it leave it like that i want to have i want to have some options to maintain presence on the board especially against this deck um, which, you know, with the deep Carl and stuff can really get some stuff moving. So we'll draw three cards and pass it back on over to Alfredo. Afraid is sitting on, let's see, two actions and a Droven Jeb. Um, redistributed wealth. If your opponent has more point, uh, points in their score pile, move the card with the lowest positive victory point value from their score pile to your score pile. Um, interesting. So we could... We could like fight Deep Carl into one of these creatures and then redistributed wealth it into our um into our discard pile or our, rather into our score pile. Um not sure what the play is here. You know, let's let I guess let's do it. Let's do it. We'll um go ahead and deep carl. That really just does not seem like a great great move uh i could just play play creatures stuff one of their creatures back it just seems like not a whole lot of value i guess you're probably uh, with re redistributed wealth not generally going to be getting a lot of points um but i mean if this gen ormico were were about to be harvested then holding on to this redis redistributed wealth could be really good actually uh, really quite good but uh, let's do this. We'll fight the Deep Carl into the Teed Scrapper. Uh, so that's going to get scored over there. Teed Scrapper gets discarded. We will play this back of the line. Move our creature to the bottom of its owner's deck. So we'll move uh, Ginormica over there into the bottom of that deck. And then we've got the redistributed wealth. Um, we can make it happen. We have They have more victory points than us. Uh, so we'll take the lowest positive uh, victory point value card from their score pile which happens to be that deep carl and then we'll toss down the droven jeb a uh, really great bonus ability on this reveal your hand move the least powerful creature revealed this way to your score pile so a really really strong card to have on the board in the active uh, or even mature state um, and that'll end it for uh, alfreda swap it back on over to our vignet see what we're looking at more <laughs> brother bears we got brother bears all over the place um yeah, I think this is just we play two brother bears and probably I, I don't really want to let this drove and Jeb get activated. That's a, can be a really strong bonus ability. So we'll go ahead and fight the brother bear into the drove and Jeb. Uh, managing to maintain some presence on the board. Uh, I'll go ahead and discard Yoink. Um, and it is worth noting that Arvini has both Yoink and cross teleport as opposed to Alfredo, which has just the single uh, cross teleport. So we'll end things up there. Switch it back on over. Alfred is looking at uh, Millipede, Vix, uh, and Dead Drop. So we have to play something. Move a card from your hand to your opponent's score pile. I think we want to hold off onto that. Hold off on that. Uh, there is a slight problem here, is, which is to say anything we play can just get uh, killed by both these brother bears. So, but... I feel like this is a, a part of, of this game that I really struggle with in situations like this where we're like behind on the board. Um, but, you know, like, do I play? I mean, Vix is such a low value creature, aside from the fact that it can be used to take out any creature. Um, so I, I think what we're, we're going to do is we're just going to play both these. Uh, we'll discard the dead drop because that can be a great uh, card to help us close out the game later. And then we'll draw three and pass it on back. Harvinier uh, is going to toss down the buddy system. Friendly creatures gain team up. Uh, that's not going to help us here. And we got Silence Enforcer and Kazoo. So honestly, it was kind of what I was afraid of uh, for Alfreda. Um, just these 
these creatures, throwing them down and having them get scored. But the alternative is like, let's say I just play Vix as my one card to play, um, discard the Millipede or something. Uh, then, you know, the Vix can still be, still get killed. This brother bear would go to mature. And then for the most part, Arvinia could just kind of sit, sit on having uh, that brother bear mature. You know, it could fight, it could do whatever later. Um, because Alfreda doesn't really have a way to, um, I guess it has the back of the line, but generally doesn't, it doesn't have any type of like widespread board control. Um, so, but I think the play here is we'll fight both these, uh, so brother bear, uh, into Vix and brother bear into millipede. Uh, and then the main reason that I wanted to do that is because now we get this unimpeded silence enforcer, um, which uh, is about to move to active. Uh, your opponent cannot play actions or relics. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So um, let's see, we got Vile Chap, move all relics to their owner's discard pile. Uh, and we got this annex uh, with, the, with team up. Um, and this back of the line that cannot be played. So how do we break through on this line? Um, I'm not sure. Not sure what the play is. Um, we have to play something. So maybe we play this low value annex. This vile chap. I mean, maybe there's a situation where Alf Alfredo can just blitz through to the end of the game, even if most of its creatures are getting scored. So Is this kazoo? Uh, in theory, Arvinia can just play another creature. This kazoo can take out Annex and then ready that creature, and that creature can then fight uh, if we play out a second creature. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, I want I want this series to, we're just going to play out the Vile Chap, and we'll discard back of the line. Let's hold back of the line. Uh, we need we need some way to break through, break through on the board. Um, so let's, let's just try that. So we're going to draw... One, two, two cards, and then we'll pass turn. So I want this series to like, um, hopefully, be like entertaining to watch. Oh my! Oh my! Um, I want the 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 series to be entertaining to watch, but I'm like also hoping it's going to be a good learning experience for me. So apologize if that means some of the pacing is uh, a little bit slow, uh, just as I try and work out what I, what I want to do. And I, I suppose it's worth considering too that I am playing both, obviously playing both sides here, so I have to think twice as much. Whereas if I were playing against somewhere, someone else, I don't have to think about both both turns. Um, all right. Well, this fog machine is going to go out, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, so friendly creatures gain sneak five, and they have team up. So I think what we do is we throw down a kazoo, throw down a second kazoo, uh, as we kind of foretold. This kazoo is going to fight Annex. Uh, it will rotate a friendly card to active. So this kazoo will fight Vile Chap, which will rotate this kazoo to active. Um, and unfortunately, these are not pinwheels, because uh, pinwheel a pinwheel would allow us to turn the Silence Enforcer back to dormant, which would buy us another turn of that disruption there. Um, but that is not that's not what we got. Uh, we got two. I I did did see those cards. I try my best not to see. But. That's also kind of a weird part where it's like when we're at the end of the deck, I need to I need to be able to know how many I'm drawing. All right, so we have back of the line. We've got Deep Carl. Uh, and we have this Auditor. So uh, we did just back of the line. All right, so I feel like the fact that I saw the hand in this in this case is like a, li a little bit of knowledge that uh, that we probably shouldn't have, but at the same time, we did we did very specifically uh, back of the line the ginormica. So if I were playing like really sweaty or something, I would know that that this deck had just picked up the ginormica. Um, now I guess we don't know if that's the only card, but either way, we know that they're holding the ginormica, which is three points. So if it happens to be the only creature Arvinia has in hand, I think this auditor is too much of a liability. Um, so what we will do here is probably play this deep Carl for funds. 
Although, you know, interestingly enough, we could like potentially. Mm. Let's do this. I no, we we can't play the auditor. I'm just a little bit worried we're gonna hit our cross teleport. Have we? We only have three cards. We only have three cards in the in this pile, and we have. Uh, is it four? Okay. Um. You know what? Just let's just yellow it. We'll play deep Carl. Deep Carl is going to play. Uh, I gotta remember how to do it. I'm gonna play cheap shot. Your opponent discards a random card from their hand. All right, so that that could that could help us. So we'll shuffle those up, and then we'll discard. Oh, booyah, Ginormica. So uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I feel less bad doing this auditor. So let's go ahead and do that. So it says your opponent reveals their hand, move the least powerful creature revealed this way to their score pile. Uh, so we've got uh, Teed Scrapper. So there was that, that we would have been fine had we done the auditor, but I feel like that is probably the safer move. We have a pinpoint incoming, so that's probably not going to not going to be great. Uh, and then lastly, I think what we do is we do play this back of the line. I could like potentially do it for my own deep Carl, but I think I want to get this kazoo off the board. Um, I think that's I think that's my my thought there. Uh, there it is to the bottom. And then we'll rotate there, uh, draw. One, two, three, and all right, let's do it. Let's do it. We have only pinpoint left. So that's pretty great. We probably need to just score the silence enforcer before something happens here. So silence enforcer is going to get scored. Uh, I think we do pinpoint for one. Uh, we haven't seen their cross teleport yet, uh, unless it was in the discard pile, and I just forgot. Um, so we'll choose a number. Your opponent reveals their hand and moves any cards revealed this way with victor point value equal to that number to their discard pile. So we'll pick one. Let's see what we're looking at here. We got cross teleport. There it is. We got Roxy, and we got the silent room. Wow, absolutely negated that turn. That's amazing. Um. And we got that was it. We got the pinpoints. Uh, these aren't necessarily doing 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 us any harm here, although like the likelihood of team up working is not very good. So, anyways, uh, we'll we'll just leave it out there for now. Maybe maybe we'll find a way to make it work. Uh, so we'll draw one, two, three. Swap back on over. Uh, <laughs> no cards in hand. So no cards in hand. Nothing to fight. So these two cards are gonna move to the uh excuse me move to the mature position we're gonna draw three cards and pass them back quick turn right there that we got here we've got this adult swim we've got a yoink and we've got kazoo i think we just play kazoo oh hey there it is me word of us from uh the future at least compared to when this video is recorded i just want to acknowledge that what you're about to see uh, is definitely wrong. Uh, I just attribute it to dad brain. Okay. Uh, so the ginormica is exactly where the ginormica should be. Um, now, fortunately, I don't think it had a meaningful impact on the outcome of the game, but you know, at the very least I've now highlighted to you, uh, something that is about to go wrong. So enjoy. How did this just thinking, how did this end up here? Did this not get moved over? Because we just pinpointed. This does not seem right. I did a nothing turn, discarded my Ginormica, scored the Teeth Scrapper. At the very least, this should be in the bottom of the deck, right? Oh dear, I feel like something went terribly wrong. I don't know how I managed to do it though. So this is what we're gonna do. 
So we're going to take these. I don't know how I did that. I think maybe it's because my hand, like my hand was so close or something. All right, there we go. Because this Ginormica was at the bottom of our deck, so we, we basically were guaranteed to draw it that last turn, I think. I, that could be wrong. Could be wrong, but that is what we got. We'll play out the Ginormica and the Kazoo. We'll discard you, Mike. And I'll try and pay more attention, I guess, to whatever I'm doing here. Uh, these will all rotate. And yeah, that seems, uh, that seems good. Do one, two, three. One, two, three, pass back. Again, we're just in episode two of the series. We got some work to do. We got Silent Room, Yearn, and Droven Jeb. We had, like really do need to start scoring some points here. Somehow. Somehow we need to do it. Um, <clears throat> but if I leave either of these creatures out, they can hit my Droven Jeb. I don't know. No say. No say. Um, so I don't know. Let's just let's just try it. Fight the Ginormica. Deep Carl is gonna fight the Kazoo. I'm hoping we can just get to a point uh, where this deck can can close out the game because it just has less cards. One, two, three. Like probably very soon. Would be my guess if there's only if that was the only the only cards that are left. <laughs> um. All right. Here we go. Uh, we've got the we've got the adult swim. If your opponent controls a card worth one victory point, move it to your score pile. Um, I think we probably do that with the silent room. We could do that with the silent room. Could also cross teleport. Try and get some, but they don't really have any value cards. Let's do this. We'll um Adult Swim to grab the Silent Room so we don't get locked out of playing actions that way. Um, we'll harvest both these just because, you know, there's only three cards left. We can see that. Uh, we got to try and do what we can. And then we're going to do a little trick here. So we're going to play War Siren. Um, oh, this is not, that, never mind, not a trick. But we're just going to play that because I don't think it's worth holding on to. But I also do want to hold on to my Cross Teleport. Um, so we'll draw one, two cards. Uh, and then pass it back. Let's see what we're looking at here. We have Droven Jeb and Yearn. Um, interesting. So we have to play a card. Interesting. Interesting here. So <clears throat> I kind of want to score this Droven Jeb. Um, but I have to play a card. So if I play Roxy, the, here's the problem. If I play Roxy right now, if I play Roxy, it's going to come in dormant. And then I'm going to have to wait, not next turn, but the following turn. I mean, I suppose it's possible this Roxy, I could like fight uh, into something. It's only three power. I could fight into something with that and get it, get it scored. Um, but it's also going to take me an additional turn to do that. Um, so I'm not sure if the better option here is to dead drop the Roxy. We're so far behind in points though. We're so far ahead. We're so far behind in points. Um, it's just not great. Yeah, you know, the whole, remember that whole plan I had where I'm like, we're just going to score a lot of points later. It'll be fine. It's not working. It's not working as I was intending. So what do we want to do? Give away more points? I think we try and score as many points as we can, but well, I guess, I guess we just slow play. It's only one point, though. It's not much. Um, and yeah, that's that. I, I do not feel like I've done Alfreda uh, justice in this particular matchup. But I'm not sure it can be helped. Interesting. So we still have this cross teleport. There's also a yoink coming now. The thing is, there's like almost nothing of value. There's almost nothing of value in this that I would want to even trade with this cross teleport. So maybe we just hold on to the cross teleport for insurance. 
Well, now here, now here's the deal, because this Roxy can get fought off the board if I play any of these. So it's if I play either creature, this Roxy can get fought off the board, or this Roxy can get scored by by you know one either either of us, not either of us by by me, because uh, the Roxy can fight into it. Um, the alternative, if I don't play a single creature, I have to play a card. I would have to cross teleport for very, very minimal value. Um, very, very minimal value. Yeah, basically no value. There, there, there's no value. There's not a single. Yeah, it's like. I th I think I think probably the play is still to just hold on to this cross teleport um and draw two cards and then end that there uh, and that means that the game here is going to be finishing out. Uh the question will be is it going to be a big enough swing to get from 4 points to 15 points. Um and that will certainly be interesting. This yearn is going to get scored. Uh Roxy is going to fight uh, I guess Kazoo. Yep. Uh, there's not a way I could have before five, six, seven. No, so I couldn't have teamed up the kazoo. I don't think I would want to, anyways. Uh, Drove and Jeb can get scored here. Then we'll cross to teleport. So we're going to choose two cards here. Um, choose two cards. Uh, one is going to be Moth, and then redistributed wealth. You know, th it could be enough. I don't know. We'll see. Um. We'll see. Two cards. Then we're going to hop on over here for... Uh, there's something wrong with this card. I don't know why that card is, is a different size than all the other cards. I must have done something. So we got Silence Enforcer for two. Is that the only two? Wow. It's like a surprisingly low, low point game. So maybe it's not going to make a difference. Uh, so we'll grab those two. Yeah, because Roxy is not. So Roxy is going to go there. Moth and Redistributed Wealth. All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, then we got Silence Enforcer, Vile Chap, Cross Teleport. Oh my gosh. It, it, Alfredo did it. Uh, I don't know if I've just completely thrown or what. Also, I don't know why the cards are different size. It, it's just all very confusing. Uh, so, yeah, we got that, right? Uh, 12 points for our Vignet. Of course, the game ending, um, this dead drop being played, move a card from your hand to your opponent's score pile, no cards in hand. Uh, so no biggie there. Um, and ended up being quite close. Um, I, I guess it worked. You know, I guess the... Uh, I guess the I guess the the whole plan of getting all of our own creatures scored by R, I mean Alfreda's own creatures scored, uh, and then just trying to blitz towards the end uh, was enough. And I mean, maybe maybe there's something to be said about like discarding that cross teleport earlier um, for our Vignier, trying to get to the Yoink maybe because at least the Yoink is just a positive value. You're getting one one additional point. Um, you know, the, that cross teleport is a, it's like a, a, a rare situation where a cross teleport just provides no value whatsoever. Excuse me to the person playing, I suppose, aside from aside from a point, which at this point would have tied the match, um, which would have meant, uh, ironically, that Arvinier would have won. So. So had we played, had Arvinier played the cross teleport last turn, it would have won. I mean, that's that's a, gr a great example of how closing in Ardent Reapers is the mo is probably the most critical part of the game. Like, I'm not not probably is is one of the most critical. I, I won't, won't necessarily say, say skills. I mean, you have to be able to see how to close it, but also understanding how your deck needs slash wants to close um, is a very very important uh, thing to to learn and understand about the deck you're playing. Um, and uh, one of the most difficult things to pick up immediately when playing a new deck. 
So uh, there you have it. Uh, looks like Alfreda, the Proxenus of Tottens, uh, takes a match off of our Vigne Centurion. Very close one, 13 to 12. Um, uh, let's hop on over to the second uh, second match for this round, uh, which is going to be Woeful Patriarch versus Chelsea Jacker Natoya. Let's hop to it. All right, here we are back at it. Uh, we got, of course, Woeful Patriarch, probably one of my most, uh, one of the decks I'm the most familiar with, have the most plays with. Uh, quite quite solid against Chelsea Jacker Natoya. Um, Got a Silent Room here and Silence Enforcer, so two things that can definitely throw a wrench in Willful Patriarch's plans. Um, the question will be, will it be enough? Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see how how this works out. Um, I'm not sure what our line of attack is gonna be here. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we're necessarily gonna get particular board dominance out of either of these decks. Um, but, uh, Hey, you know, we got a deep Carl. So, uh, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Wolfful Patriarch is probably going to just toss a bunch of, oh, we get pockets out. That's actually a good start for Wolfful Patriarch, uh, pockets and Drixel, uh, versus, uh, Saboteur and all sorts of, all sorts of things. Saboteur and Droven Jeb. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to do one of these things here real quick. Cross some cards over there. I'll turn back, draw three cards. And see what we got. <clears throat> Woeful Patriarch currently sitting uh, in a decent position here. Uh, we can take out this Droven Jeb with pockets. That's a pretty nice, pretty nice win there. I would say probably a pretty nice win. Um, I'm actually wondering if maybe this Drixel just fights the Saboteur. Get two points into the score pile for Chelsea, Jacker, and the Toya. Uh, something we can potentially pull out later. The other option is uh, Drixel's nice to have with Droven Jeb. Um, another option is we could potentially teed scrap the the uh, the the Drixel out of uh, out of the out of the uh, score pile. I'm not sure I want to play this for turn to sender. I think I like this for maybe later. We also need to try and keep something on the board to deal with the silence enforcer if possible. Um, yeah, let's do this. Uh, so pockets uh, using sneak nine is going to fight down the Droven Jeb, get two points in the score pile. Drixel is actually going to fight Saboteur. So put two points over into uh, the other score pile. We're going to play Teed Scrapper. We're going to play Pinwheel. Let me some Pinwheel. And then discard Return to Sender. I rotate there. Draw three cards. And uh, pass turn. <clears throat> so I've redistributed wealth. Oh, wow. So that Drixel uh, was a great play. Great play because uh, otherwise, had we not done that, uh, had Woeful Patriarch not done that, um, this Droven Jeb would have been uh, redistributed back to um, back over here, which would have been a huge win, great win for uh, Chelsea. Um, this is a, definitely a tough spot to be here. And here we got uh, two creatures that can be played to the board. Um, and both of them can get killed. Both of them can get easily killed. So what do we want to do here? We could play this redistributed wealth and just discard the two creatures. We know Woeful Patriarch doesn't have that many creatures, though. You know, let's do this. Actually, we'll play those two. Let's hold on to the redistributed wealth. Uh, and we'll draw two cards. Let's just see how this works. See how this works. We'll have to put that out of our mind here. Um, so we've got a Droven Jeb, Droven Jeb there, and, um, yeah, wow. Uh, so Armageddon, let's go ahead and discard that, and we'll discard Fast Forward. Um, and then we fight both these creatures. It seems like just free, 
three victory points. So So let's go ahead and fight with pinwheel into pinwheel. Score the pinwheel. Teed Scrapper um, is going to fight into the Silence Enforcer. Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't use Pinwheel's ability. Rotate a card to a different state. Go ahead and rotate the Droven Jeb. I'm going to hold off on harvesting that. Uh, Teed Scrapper, move a card from your opponent's score pile to its owner's discard pile. So that works. Maybe we can get our, our Drixel, get some Drixel value there. And then we'll draw three cards and uh, pass it back over. Aha, look at this. You've you've have to get at, you've activated my trap card. Um just like we totally planned. So only two two power creatures, which is or two two victory point creatures. So I think we start basically with the redistributed wealth. If your opponent has more points in their score pile, move the card with the lowest positive victory point value from their score pile to your score pile. So um yeah, we'll go ahead and I guess just do that. Um, then we've got the auditor. I feel like we want to discard the auditor. We don't want to score any more of Wolfful Patriarch's creatures, uh, if at all possible. Uh, although we could play it and get a second creature. You know what? Let's do it. YOLO. Dark Vellum. Uh, the buddy system, Dark Vellum, and Greaser. So that's, uh, well... <laughs> uh, all right, so the auditor uh, moved the least powerful creature revealed this way to their score pile. So interesting. So are they? What in the world? How are they smaller? I don't get it. I, I just I don't get it. I don't know why they're smaller now. Why is this deck smaller? Has that deck always been smaller? Doesn't look like it. Is it, is it like, can I pull it out of the hand there or something? I don't know. That's very confusing. At least it's scoring properly. Uh, that's, that's the important part. Um, and uh, that was it. So we'll go ahead and rotate here, uh, draw three cards, pass it back. Wolfful Patriarch, uh, as, as we saw, is probably very happy in this situation to be able to score this greaser. So uh, we'll get the buddy system out. Uh, all friendly creatures gain team up. We could fight one of these creatures, um, but I feel like getting a Droven Jeb in the score pile is also huge because it's a th an eight power creature. So let's go ahead and try that. Droven Jeb, going to go to the score pile, reveal your hand, move the least powerful creature revealed this way to your score pile. Classic Greaser, the least powerful creature in the score pile. Um, just making sure this is still scoring stuff properly. Uh, we draw that one, two, three, and pass it back. We do lose a, a woeful patriarch. Does lose some some value on the board there, um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Go ahead and place out Taco. We'll uh, play Deep Carl to. Uh, Drop a card off the bottom of the deck, which is Moth. We don't have a creature to rotate. I think we just ditch this direct deposit. Not really worth it right now. Uh, it's going to be nice that we can potentially score this Auditor here shortly. One, two. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three. Sort of back on over. So we've got a uh, Droven Jeb we can throw out. And Droven Jeb, uh, I think we probably do that. Toss that out. We have Vault Tunnel. And now we haven't seen... Haven't seen the Silent Room yet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be keen to uh, maybe hold on to this Vault Tunnel. We could Adult Swim the... We could do Taco or Payday. Let's do payday, I guess. So adult swim. Uh, if your opponent controls a card worth one victory point, move it to your score pile. Or grab a payday. Then I think we hold on to this vault tunnel. And we draw one flip. 
draw one more, pass it on over. All right, move all creatures worth one victory point or less to their controller's score pile. I mean, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and fight Moth into Drove and Jeb. So that's going to put uh, Drove and Jeb down there. And we got What's This? Move the top card of your opponent's deck to their discard pile. If it is worth less than zero victory points, move it to your opponent's score pile instead. So Pinwheel, that's nice. Um, we've got this silent room. I feel like we play it now or we play it later. Play it now or play it later. We could also, we can score three of these things, that which is pretty good, but we also lose a lot of uh, pressure on the board. Hmm. Difficult. Difficult decision to make. I think we score the auditor. Get that out of there. And we'll play out the silent room. And then maybe hold off on this roll of the dice. We'll discard it. One, two, three. We'll discard it. I'm not really sure if that's the play. We could obviously score both these, um, both these creatures right now. I guess it would be it. Pretty good value here, but we also don't have anything on the board then. And we don't have a great way to. You know what? Let's let's play it. We'll play it. Roll the dice, which scores both these. There's probably not a better time to play it than than right there. We're at least keeping it keeping it close. And uh, we've already drawn three cards. Pass it back. Um, Looking at Vault Tunnel and, oh, the Cargo Pants. I forgot about that. That's like a pivotal part of this deck. Uh, Vault Tunnel, move an enemy relic to your score pile. Yeah, I mean, like, do you discard the Silent Tunnel? The thing is, if, if this deck goes any slower, it's just going to lose because it's going too slow. Um, we'll discard the Buddy System, or uh, score the Buddy System, rather. Discard Cross Teleports. Then we draw one, two, three, four because of the cargo pants rotate the cargo pants and swap it back up yeah back of the line not to the not tonight move a card from your opponent's score pile to its owner's hand Ooh, that could be good to its owner's hand um that just make those bigger Oh, I, you know what? I see what the problem is. Hey, you know, I figured it out at least. So I, I switched it up so I wasn't using shift to change the turns. But uh, I'm apparently using equals, which is plus, which is increasing the size of the cards over the course of the game. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, we'll figure it out eventually. Uh, so what would we want to move back to our hands? I mean, Silence Enforcer can be pretty good. takes two points away from I mean that could be pretty good maybe we try that all right so not tonight move a card from your opponent's score pile to its owner's hand uh, we'll do that score that great card uh, play out the silence enforcer you know at least I figured out what's going on the saboteur gonna come down And I think we actually hold on to this back of the line. Some great disruption. Look at how big this is getting. I've done this to myself. That's it's hilarious. Uh, so we'll draw one, two, and then uh, swap it back on over to Woeful Patriarch. Woeful Patriarch, um, wow, yeah, that would have been, uh, honestly, maybe not game ending, but that would have hurt quite a bit had this, uh, this little by taken effect um all right i think what we do is we just we play this we play these creatures out it's okay woeful patriarch is probably like perfectly content in this situation uh do we hold on to the lullaby it buys us and it buys us a turn yeah let's do it so we'll go one, two, 
get a third card because of the cargo pants. Uh, all this stuff rotates. We couldn't even play that, of course, because of the uh, silence enforcer. All right, there we go. Move an enemy creature to its owner's hand. So, um, I think we probably play that. An enemy creature to its owner's hand. Teed Scrapper. That could work. Uh, this Silence Enforcer I can recycle, which might actually be okay. We'll fight uh, Drixel, so we'll score Drixel. We'll play back of the line to move a creature to the bottom of its owner's deck. Uh, so that's going to go right there. And then the Saboteur. What are we looking at here? Oh dear. Uh, two cards left. So, or rather two cards in the, the uh, discard pile there. So, uh, yeah, I think we hold on to this direct deposit. Um, go ahead and rotate, flip the discard, and draw two. I mean, draw draw basically both cards. Um, and uh, flip it back over. Let's see what we got. Um, It is a lot of that's a lot of stuff. I think we start with return to sender. Shuffle two enemy creatures into their owner's deck. Shuffle two friendly creatures into their owner's deck. So that's gonna go back. We got like full disruption going on right now. Um we'll play out Teed Scrapper. We'll discard Armageddon and discard fast forward. And we'll do that. Draw one. Flip, shuffle, draw two, and pass it back. Okay, so we've got uh, what's this? Move the top card of your opponent's deck to their discard pile. It's worth less than zero victory points. Move it to your opponent's score pile. So we'll go ahead and do that. It is pinwheel. That's going to get discarded. Um. So here's the deal. We can direct deposit the Silence Enforcer. Um, we do know that we've got the... Um, hmm, that is tough. Um, got, they've got the pinwheels, uh, and we've got... The Saboteur. Uh, was, was Saboteur 7? Seven? 7 or 8? Basically, this pinwheel is six. But I don't think we've gotten through both the Drove and Jebs. I'm just trying to figure out, is it, is it make more sense to direct deposit this Silence Enforcer? Or, or try and play it out, do a little bit of disruption. The problem is this Teed Scrapper can just... Can make things really rough for me because actually the T scrapper could return. I don't think this actually the silent room got scored. What would what would really mess me up if this T scrapper bought my silence enforcer? Um, honestly, it seems like Sab saboteurs is one of the worst things that I could have because it's one of the biggest bigger creatures in the deck. So, the other thing is, if I direct deposit the Silence Enforcer, that's at least two victory points for me, although it is, you know, negative one as well. Um, not really sure if the disruption is going to be all that useful because of this Teed Scrapper. And maybe we do this. Maybe we stop. We don't play anything. We got this What's This. Um, and yeah, we'll just draw that. We'll draw that. Uh, we knew what it was anyway, so that's fine. Uh, pass turn. We played a card. 
So let's see what we got here. Got pockets. Got drove and jeb. Uh, we can discard Armageddon. I think we still hold on to this lullaby. We know that there's creatures over there, so. Uh, so we'll rotate, we'll draw one, two, flip, shuffle, and draw one. And yeah, I think that's that. I feel like, I feel like, uh, there may have been a way that we could have gotten around it, but I'm not sure what it, what it was. Um, so yeah, drove and Jeb is out eight. Saboteur, I was wrong, is nine. It's not seven. So basically, if we want to win this game, if we want to end this game, we need to figure out how to get rid of Saboteur. And I don't, I just like, I don't think we can get rid of it otherwise. It's this pockets. I think once again, this pockets is going to absolutely ruin us because this pockets can fight into the silence enforcer. If I direct deposit saboteur, and then play out the silence enforcer, um, yeah, basically, if I direct deposit saboteur, play the silence enforcer, this pockets can fight into either of these creatures and lose. It can opt to not use its sneak nine. Um, which will then sh put them back in my discard pile. So it's basically, do I potentially deny the the two point score of Silence Enforcer, uh, or and I can, like I, I I don't know. I feel like I need to play all these things. Yeah, I think we're just about to get hit with the coup de gras from Willful Patriarch. So I think maybe the the more sensible option is try and do some type of disruption. So we'll basically direct deposit the saboteur. This card is harvested. Move a card from your hand to your opponent's score pile. Yeah, that's like we're just going to we'll easily get stalled out by the saboteur. Let's try a little bit of disruption. Oh, no, here we go. No, this is good. This is fine. What was I thinking? This is great. The sounds enforcer prevents. Um, uh, prevents stuff from uh, actions from being played. So uh, honestly, that may. No, then there's the teeth scrapper. All right. Well, in that case, <laughs> we tried. We gave it a we gave it a good shot. Woeful patriarch did, did its thing again. Um, so uh, what we have here card from your opponent's score pile to its owner's discard pile yeah okay so uh the way this works the way this works is we've got this teed scrapper this teed scrapper can fight and score the silence enforcer uh yeah it can can fight and score the silence enforcer before both these creatures leave play teed scrapper move a card from your opponent's score pile to its owner's discard pile um, so what we're going to do is we're absolutely going to take that saboteur out. Uh, so it goes to their discard pile. Now that that is resolved, the bonus ability of Teeth Scrapper has been resolved. Um, oh, interesting. Could I do this differently? I could. No, I could. Is it going to be enough? I, so I could, I could just har uh, harvest this. I could harvest this and then fight pockets and lose to the silence enforcer. I don't know if we're going to have enough gumption there. Is this just one card? It is just one card. I think that's actually the play. No, this is fine. This is fine. Teeth Scrapper. I think we have to do it like this. I think Teeth Scrapper uh, scores itself, pulls back the saboteur, pockets, fights, to drop the silence enforcer and then uh we'll play lullaby play lullaby so no fighting uh this stuff rotates we got three cards we draw one yeah so i think that i think that will be the the end sequence that we want 
Um, which is to say that uh, Chelsea uh, can't do anything. So draws two cards into hand and then passes back. It's a, an effective stall uh, from from Woeful Patriarch. Uh, Woeful Patriarch, of course, having all cards in hand right now. Um, and for whatever reason, not being able to use them. Uh, don't even need to use this stuff. So Drove and Jeb can uh, harvest itself to harvest Pinwheel. Uh, we can play Armageddon. We can play Fast Forward. So Armageddon, move all creature to their owner's discard pile. Um, so there's that. Uh, rotate all creature, all cards to mature, uh, which we've done so. We'll go ahead and score the cross teleport. Then I'm sorry, the uh, cargo pants, and then of course the the final coup de gras, just so we can get the actual um, end score. Uh, we've got a search two, three. I think, oh gosh, let's just do it this way. Let's just do it this way. We're going to spread. And I need to really once again fix my uh, fix my key bindings to something that's not what they are right now. Again, no, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be too good, right off the bat, right? We want this negative one in here. Gosh, there are cards everywhere. There are cards everywhere. So these are going to go over here. We're just going to go ahead and probably that two is what we want. And probably that other two. So let's see what happens if I put all of these things together. And then we just go like this. Put them all right there. 24. Pretty good. I don't even remember what it was before, but it's um, it's very certain that uh, yeah, that five victory points is not that much. Um, so there you go. Um, you know, not necessarily unsurprising. I yeah, I really think there is there is some ways that I could play that better. Uh, if you if there was something that particularly um, stuck out to you as you were watching, like it, was there a pivotal moment or was it just like a a, a, a calamity, a, a collection of, of, of errors that, that led to that situation? Um, maybe, you know, maybe the disruption we had, we really didn't get a huge amount of value out of it. I mean, obviously Silent Room coming down and just getting immediately um, vault tunneled away is not great. Um, you know, I think it, it, I will say it is, you know, the fact that there's a silent room and the silence enforcer historically for Woeful Patriarch hasn't necessarily meant a huge amount. It really is the long persistent effect of like a silence, a silent master or potentially like silence enforcers that can be reused, um, with, um, yeah, with like, with like a pinwheel or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like Wolfful Patriarch even did a fair amount of scoring of creatures from Chelsea, Chelsea and Natoya. Um, so it wasn't even like it, its entire time it was trying to score its own creatures, Wolfful Patriarch, that is. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Uh, so that is, uh, that is round two complete. Um, some, some very interesting games there. One very close and one very not close. Um, although I think you will discover as we move forward in this, uh, tournament again, I really enjoy Willful Patriarch. It's probably one of my favorite decks currently. Um, I think you will find that, um, Willful Patriarch doesn't really win small generally. Uh, when it wins, it wins big. Um, and when it loses, it loses sort of uh, cl closely it loses closely um at least that's been my experience with one notable exception where it got locked out from a silent master and then lost very very heavily <laughs> but hey that is it uh, for the second episode of the hecatomb uh group a uh we'll be back hopefully next week for uh, to complete out this first group um which i'm excited for uh see how things end up um you know we, we certainly are already looking at um some you know great potential options uh for some some decks that are going to be moving on from the group stage from group a um, and probably what we'll do is at the end of that uh video 
to, to finish up uh, group A, we'll do just a little bit of a recap, maybe not necessarily a game recap, but we'll look at um, look at what decks will be advancing, um, or at least that at, at this point, what we know will be advancing. Um, and and yeah, just to kind of talk through that, talk through that a little bit. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you all have a splendid day, night, evening, morning, whatever it is, whatever time it is, whenever you're watching this. Um, and I will catch you all in the next video.